From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. Welcome to Unlock the Science. I'm Lawan Jila Suladet. This is the inaugural episode of Unlock the Science, a new weekly English language news documentary show of Jula Radio Plus. We launch our new program with the most scientifically relevant issue to Thailand and many other developing nations, vaccine production capacity. The COVID-19 pandemic has strayed the public health system of Thailand and heavily hurt the country's economy. To protect their populations from this deadly virus, Thailand, along with many other developing countries, have relied on vaccine produced by transnational companies. Thailand, which is known for its high capability medical services, has to import these vaccines as well. This pandemic and its earth-shattering consequences have raised a big question. Could Thailand become self-reliant in its production of vaccines for domestic use and probably for export as well? Inventing a vaccine that is safe and with a high efficacy is a long-enduring process with an enormous financial investment. It could take as long as 10 years and over 30 million U.S. dollars in investment from the beginning until the clinical trial in humans. This doesn't include the manufacturing process for application to wider groups of population yet. The process start with creating a prototype of a vaccine. This step could simply be carried out in a laboratory with a few scientists working on it. Then, this prototype needs to be tested with lab animals, which could be some kinds of mouse or larger animals, such as monkeys. After it is proven to be safe in animals, the prototype will be applied to test with humans. The clinical trial with humans usually take three steps. It starts with a small group of a dozen men to test the safety and figure out the appropriate dose of the vaccine and whether the vaccine could trigger an immune response. The trial then proceeds with more humans in hundreds. And then, in the third and last step of clinical human trial, the number of volunteers amount to thousands in testing the safety and efficacy of the vaccines across diverse groups of people. This last human test needs to be done with populations in multi-countries as well. Not many vaccines invented by Thai scientists have been able to proceed to test in large numbers of volunteers. According to one estimate, this large-scale human trial could cost over $3,300 US dollars per head. If you test 10,000 people, then the cost is over $30 million already. Therefore, inventing a vaccine is not a small investment. After the clinical human trial, the vaccine enters into its manufacturing process, which needs production facilities. This is where another major financial investment comes in. In many instances, a vaccine could not reach this stage of production due to the lack of facility and finance required. In Thailand, many of vaccine prototypes have been invented but could not proceed to manufacture for commercial scale. Why is this? For a country which is quite well respected for its public health service and medical science in general. Professor Dr. Giat Rakrung Tham director of the COVID-19 Vaccine Development Program at Vaccine Research Center, Faculty of Medicine, Jula Longkorn University, or Jula VRC, has been involved in the efforts to produce vaccines in Thailand for a long time. He talked to Unlock the Science editor and producers, Sinfa Tansarawut, to help us understand this long journey. Dr. Kiet. You have been involved in the current effort 
to invent a COVID-19 vaccine for Thailand. Could you tell us how the undertaking has been going so far? We have been uh, start working on these uh, COVID-19 vaccine development programs since, uh, I would say, since uh, February 2020. Uh, actually, uh, this initiative is started because of we has been collaborated uh, with uh, a world in all uh, vaccine technology platform, and we can discuss a little bit uh, later on. And then uh, once the uh, uh, SARS-CoV-2 viral sequence has been uh, announced from China uh, around uh, January 2020, so we set up the team uh, uh, at our vaccine research center to start design the vaccine, uh, working with our strategic partner in the U.S. and then tested in uh, mice and monkey. So by actually by July, we got a very good result both in uh, in in mice. Uh, uh, the data in mice we got it in May uh, last year, and then in January at uh, July we got the data in, in, in monkey. And both are very impressive in terms of very high neutralizing titer immune responses. Uh, then the, the, the current step right now is we in the process of uh, piling um, what we call the CMO, uh, the two biotech in California to start making clinical batch vaccine for us uh, to do a clinical trial in, in Thailand. So anticipating we going to start the trial uh, in uh, allows uh, by the end of April this year, to 2021, or early May. In parallel, we also prepare uh, a factory or manufacture a vaccine uh, industry in Thailand to get the tech transferring and prepare our own vaccine by the end of the year. So that's a very really brief summary of our program. When do you expect that your vaccine will be applicable to the general public? Well, uh, I think the, um, the, the number of milestones that we have to achieve, I think the first thing is um, we have to look at the phase one data. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the good news is that uh, although our vaccine technology platform calling mRNA vaccine technology uh, is a brand new globally, but during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, you have seen that at least two vaccine company, one is uh, BioNTech Pfizer, and mm -hmm. the other one in Moderna, already got the vaccine uh, uh, efficacy data uh, in phase three, uh, reaching 94 to 95% efficacy mm -hmm. in terms of preventing COVID-19 disease. And right now, more than 120 million doses have been vaccinated globally, particularly in the developed country because they, they, they get access to vaccine earlier. So, so I think this technology, uh, one of our phase one show good response and identify the safety dose and the optimal dose. We have to go to phase two study and that anticipate to be done phase one by June and phase two, hopefully by September. Now, the question is, the, and you ask that, uh, how soon we're going to uh, uh, utilize this vaccine uh, more widely, uh, at, at least at the emergency use authorization? Mm -hmm. I would say it really depends on whether we have to do phase three clinical trial or not. Mm -hmm. We hope not, because we believe that by next six months, Hopefully, the scientific community led by WHO should be able to identify what we call the level of correlate immune protection. So if any vaccine can reach that target goal of uh, immune response, mm -hmm. in, in, in this case, let's say our vaccine in phase one, two, can prove that we can reach that goal, then we might not need to do phase three trial. In that case, we can submit this to our Thai FDA and to get approval for emergency use. So if that's the case, hopefully early next year uh, or by the end of this year, we should be able to 
uh, uh, you know, to produce million of doses and get access to at least high people or, or country uh, in a neighborhood country that uh, vaccine also needed. Uh, as you have said, inventing a vaccine takes years and a huge investment. So why does Thailand need to invent its own vaccine? Can we just simply buy from overseas? My strong argument is that the lesson learned, very painful lesson learned for Thailand and many uh, under you know, uh, de developing country is that, you see in the, in the last decade uh, when we have the swine flu uh, you know, uh, uh, issue back in the, you know, uh, 11 years ago, we also anticipate to buy vaccine. We, we, the government uh, put the deal to buy 2 million doses of the vaccine for Thai people at that time, back in that case ago. At the end, we didn't get vaccine until the pandemic, that time almost finished. And uh, globally, uh, vaccination of the COVID-19 vaccine had been vaccinated at least more than 200 million doses. Or 200 million people had get access to vaccine, but zero for Thai people right now. Mm -hmm. so, so that a strong answer, an argument that we should not wait any further. We should set up our own supply chain, development value chains to make sure that for this pandemic, particularly for the near future pandemic, we should be able to stand up and self-dependent. And hopefully we shall also be able to help our neighborhood country or uh, or, or underserved country to get access to vaccines sooner. Uh, Dr. Kiet, you have mentioned that uh, for the current effort to invent a COVID-19 vaccine, your faculty of medicine at Jolangkorn University has been collaborating with the foreign institutions. Could you tell us about this collaboration? Yes, definitely. Uh, I'm, I would say that I, you know, at the end, the, the great friendship is very critical. Um, one of the pioneers that has been interviewed oftenly uh, along this uh, uh, COVID-19 vaccine mRNA approval is Professor Drew Weissman. So he's a professor of medicine at UAP Pennsylvania uh, in, in the United States. Uh, so we, we, we met, uh, I mean, my him, uh, few years ago, a uh, couple of times to visit Thailand, our center, uh, to join our research forum, vaccine development research forum. And so we, we, we become uh, good friends and uh, we start working with him on the mRNA vaccine development for other projects until the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, uh, you know, happening. And so we set up a team together and, and start Design the vaccine and testing the vaccine in Thailand, uh, in mice, in monkey, and now about to start in in in, uh, in human. So I think it's clearly that uh, collaboration is very critical. Actually, I have mentioned uh, the government. So do you think that the Thai government should play a role in the country effort to produce its own vaccine? Uh, I I think in, initially you need the governmental support and maybe. In, in such a pandemic, every country globally, you can see that, of course, the, 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 wealth, uh, the wealthy country, US, Europe, UK, uh, you see that they invest significantly, even they don't know yet where the vaccine, which vaccine is going to be successful, so they invest upfront money. Um, so we 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 very fortunate that the Thai government also uh, try to uh, invest the same thing uh, and this is uh, this allow us to come this far. And we're also very fortunate that uh, we'll be able to convince the public uh, the donor, both from the private sector and the general public uh, who uh, are wealth enough to support big money for us. So, so I think in investment or funding from the government should be the key for the pandemic. We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. As Dr. Giet has mentioned earlier, 
the current efforts at the Vaccine Research Center, Faculty of Medicine, Chulalongkorn University, or in short, ChulaVRC, to invent a COVID-19 vaccine, apply a new technology known as mRNA, with a collaboration from University of Pennsylvania in the United States. To understand this mRNA, we need to compare it to the traditional method of inventing a vaccine. Traditionally, a vaccine is created from a part of the virus that causes the disease, or from a weakened virus. This means the virus needs to be imported from the places affected by the disease. If this happens overseas, it could take time and involve it many procedures. However, this new technology of mRNA allows a faster procedure. Scientists now can decode the RNA sequence of the coronavirus that caused the COVID-19, as the coronavirus does not have a DNA. The RNA blueprint allows scientists to create the virus in laboratory and use parts of it to invent the vaccine. Unlock the science editor and producers, Sinfa Tansarawut, talk to Professor Drew Weisman from School of Medicine, University of Pennsylvania, United States, who is best known for his work with RNA biology that laid the groundwork for the mRNA vaccines for COVID-19. Dr. Weisman, would you say that the mRNA technology is more efficient than the traditional method of vaccine production? If so, could you explain the logics behind your assertion? There's a couple ways of, of, of reasons why the RNA has advantages. Mm -hmm. The first is that the speed that it can be made. To make an RNA vaccine, you only need the sequence of the important antigen in the viral pathogen. Mm -hmm. Once you've got that sequence, the vaccine is made. You don't have to grow it in eggs or cells. You don't have to weaken the virus. You don't have to inactivate the virus. It's quick and simple. Once you've done that, what studies have shown is that it's a very potent vaccine. So for the human trials with the mRNA vaccines of Moderna and Pfizer, antibody levels that we call neutralization levels. So that's how well the sera from an immunized person kills the virus. Those levels are three to five times higher than convalescent patients, that of patients who have gotten over the infection. Other vaccines that we've seen so far give levels that are about equal or even a little lower than the level seen in convalescent patients. So the vaccine gives very high levels of protection, of protecting antibodies. Would it mean that um, this mRNA can also apply to the production of other vaccines in the future? Yes. So we, we, we're studying about 30 different types of viruses, bacteria, parasites to make vaccines using mRNA. This includes things from malaria to HIV, hepatitis C, and many others. It's, you know, it, it's hard to imagine how broad the use of this vaccine could actually be. How do you access the current capacity of Thailand in inventing its own COVID-19 vaccine and probably other kinds of vaccine in the near future? I've been working with the Chula VRC for I think about four years. I've even had one of their people, a, a a doctoral student spend two years in my lab learning everything that we do, how we make RNA, how we purify it. Um, so I think right now they are ready and able 
to make just about any vaccine that they want to make. They're currently working with a private company to develop a GMP facility that's good manufacturing practice. What that means is that to make a vaccine, it has to be under GMP conditions, which are special filtration, purity, et cetera. So they're building everything they need to make and produce their own vaccines. So you see a, a great potential in, in the Jhulalongkorn University and probably other scientists in Thailand as well? No, definitely. My next question, apart from the know-how, it seems finance is also a key factor and the finance needed is not a small amount. How could developing country deal with this issue if they want to venture into inventing a vaccine of their own? It's a great point because making vaccines and producing them is an expensive procedure. I think Chula VRC has the backing of the Thai government who is helping with much of this cost, but they're also raising money from private sources. I've been working with the WHO who has an interest in developing mRNA production sites in underserved parts of the world. I think they're also going to be important in helping set up facilities to produce RNA vaccines in the future. Do you think the government needs to jump in to help their private sector in inventing a vaccine? And what could be the role of the government in such undertaking? Certainly in the U.S., the government is behind most new developments, most new technology. I, I don't know, or it, it would be incredibly difficult for somebody, a, a university, to develop their own vaccine pro program and to vaccinate the entire country. Um, I, I think you have to have government support, both for funding and for regulatory agency interactions, for distribution of the vaccine, for messaging to the population that they need to take the vaccine. Uh, I, I think government is critical. Inventing and then producing a vaccine is no doubt a long enduring process that also needs capable scientists and a big financial investment. Dr. Weisman told us that manufacturing a vaccine in the United States for hundreds of millions of people could cost two to three billion U.S. dollars. For a smaller country with a fewer number of populations, it could cost less, but it still involves a large sum of funding. Both Dr. Kiet of Jhulalongkorn University and Dr. Weisman of University of Pennsylvania also let us know that the government needs to help its private sector to develop the country's capacity to invent and manufacture its own vaccines. This capacity is crucial, as Thailand and many other developing countries may not have the access to the vaccine needed as promptly as developed nations do, or may not have the vaccine at all if the disease does not affect people in the West. It is essentially vital for the world to have vaccines and for more countries to have the capacity to invent and manufacture vaccines for their domestic use and even for exports. Unlock the Science appreciates all the efforts to create and produce vaccines to protect the global populations. Unlock the Science would like to thank Professor Dr. Kiet Rakrung Tham of Faculty of Medicine, Jhulalongkorn University and Professor Drew Weisman at School of Medicine, University of Pennsylvania. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on July Radio Plus at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th, and our Facebook page. Our program is also available as podcast.
See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Simfa Tunsorawut with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. <laughs>